Morning Stampers, it's Meg from Love and Stamps. <clears throat> I haven't talked enough this morning, apparently. Anyway, I have another holiday helper tip for you. And today we are doing a treat cup that is one of my absolute favorite projects ever. I bring it out all the time to just make quick little treats to hand out to somebody. You could have them by your door for when the Amazon people come. You could have them in a little basket outside your door and, and just have a little note that says, take one UPS, thank you so much, post office, whoever's coming by your house. They're a really, really simple thing to have. You can have them in your purse and share them with people if you happen to be out. You can use them as treat, uh, as placeholders for dinners. You can, like I said yesterday, just go ahead and send them to people who you're not gonna see this holiday season when you normally would. So, all right, ready to see it? I'm gonna show you the first one with a piece of the plaid tidings paper because it's really easy to see. And then we're gonna switch gears and use the amazing vellum specialty paper from the Poinsettia Place Suite, which is linked in the video description if you wanna check that one out. So, all right, let's get started here. So I have my piece of plaid tidings, which uh, if you've looked at this paper already, you know that it comes in a really great assortment of colors and patterns, good for any um, winter holiday all the way up through Valentine's Day. And so this one looks a little bit Thanksgiving-ish to me, sort of browns. And so I'm gonna show you this uh, folding project using this one because it's easy to see. So first thing you're gonna do to make these little treat cups is go ahead and fold your paper in half um, corner to corner, okay? So like this, I usually do it, I guess I'll show you how I do it. So I'll, I'll face it towards you and, and work upside down. So you're gonna fold your paper this direction. I really like the grid paper. I like to keep it on a line so that I can see whether things are going straight or not. Or this handy diagonal plaid really brings it home for you. So then I'm gonna take this corner here and I'm gonna bring it across to sort of midway on the other side of the um, triangle and just going to keep that straight. So if I look here, you can see that this line right here is straight with this line right here. And then I know that I have that in the right place. So I'm gonna take the other corner and bring it midway across the far side and do the same thing. You want those two lines to line up at the top right there. And this paper, this plaid is absolutely perfect for this. The last step you're gonna do is to flip this one down like this. So all I'm doing is taking the top of those two layers and opening it. And then it'll stay without adhesive if you just pop it open sideways like this. Okay, really simple. All right, so uh, this is sort of the outline. Now I'm gonna give you the much more um, exciting version using the um, poinsettia place paper. So this is specialty, here we go, designer vellum, um, which comes, it's, it's a plush poinsettia paper, and it comes in a couple different patterns. Um, three, actually, let's see. So there's this uh, fun, um, sort of neutral that you could use for anything. There's the paper here that matches the dies from the stamp set, so you can punch out the flowers. And then there is this one with the um, poinsettia leaves, or holly leaves, whatever you wanna call them. Um, and that's what I'm gonna use here. And I am going to get rid of this paper here so that you can see kind of what I'm doing. All right. So, uh, like I said earlier, you're gonna fold it the same direction, but before I do the folding for this, I'm going to go ahead and um, sort of dye this paper. So I have my um, sponge daubers, which remember we made this little organizational box in one of my um, Love and Stamp Studio tours. Just a heads up on this, these wide stamp cases are in the catalog right now but they were planning to retire them. Um, Stampin' Up! is planning to retire them in May when the new catalog um, ends. They're finding that supply is running short. So if you want these wide stamp cases for anything, please um, make sure you order them sooner rather than later because when supplies run out, they will be gone. So, okay, they are the perfect size here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take my sponge dauber and my shaded spruce ink and Go ahead and just highlight the tips here of my leaves, okay? Or highlight my leaves. So you want to try to keep um, the ink as much on the plush part as possible because it does a nice job of sticking there. But if you have a lot of ink on the vellum, that's gonna come off on your fingertips because 
ink um, takes a long time to dry on vellum. Vellum's almost, uh, well, essentially like trying to stamp on plastic, so it doesn't grab super well. All right, so I'm gonna catch these little edge pieces, and then I'm gonna go back um, with my Poppy Parade here, and you could use a darker color, um, a darker red, if you are wanting to match with something different. Uh, I'm especially one of the designer series papers. I love to pull my color choices from designer series paper um, selections. And since I'm not using the points out of place designer paper for this, I'm just making our own kind of colors here. So I picked a red and a green. Last month, my Christmas cards were all purple. So this month, my Christmas cards um, for the Loven Stamps monthly tutorials are traditional red and green. And I'll show those to you here. Um, maybe at the end, I'll grab those for a second and share those. Otherwise, they're on my on my website at lovenstamps.com. Okay, so we've got our paper. We'll just make those right at the end. Um, we've got our paper colored, and let's see. Oh, it kind of looks cool on the camera. So we have basically like these halos kind of thing. And then what you want to do is think about um, your point here. Figure out where you want, what you want to fold over. And I want this... So I'm gonna get a little more ink here in the corner. I want this green leaf to fold over. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that um, here so that it's going to fold back at the end. And I want most of my, um, most of my little, uh, let me bring my paper back. Most of my little fuzzies, my plushness to be on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold it this way. So here's a quick recap. If you missed it, you're gonna line your triangle up with the grid paper. You're gonna bring the left corner to halfway across the right side and line that up so that it is straight. So right here to right here is absolutely straight. If you're a geometry fan, you want this line and this line to be parallel. If you're not a geometry fan, just ignore that I said that because I don't want you to have nightmares about your <laughs> Christmas tree cut projects. Okay, so I'm gonna push that down there. And then I'm gonna take this last part and I'm going to open this up uh, where I put those two original triangles together and I'm gonna fold this down here on the front. And the thing that will make it stay without adhesive is just popping your fingers inside because of course you're gonna put some little um, treat in there. So then uh, I don't have my, my Christmas candy yet so I just put a little piece of tissue in there. So that is the start of our treat holder. Now you could also do these without um, coloring them and then they would be the white version here. So just a nice fuzzy contrast. But then you get that really, um, really nice fuzzy um, plush vellum paper. So really a good idea. Now this desperately needs a tag, right, on the front. So we're going to add a tag embellishment and I'm going to grab my um, poinsettia place, poinsettia puddles stamp set. Now, I didn't realize this until I started to do this project, but I love that this poinsettia comes in so many sizes. These um, are smaller than real life on the front of the, they're what, 65% on the front, so they're bigger. I'll show them to you. Um, in the actual stamps, but I adore that they come in so many sizes because sometimes you have a little tiny project and sometimes you have a big project and you don't want your, um, you don't want your flowers to be the wrong size sort of format for what you're doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that. And since I have my sponge dauber handy, I'm just going to sponge a little on the sides here. Now, that's a super messy sponging job. It goes all over the edges, but who cares? Because it's going to be cut out with the dies that match all the different flower sizes. And then I need a little greeting bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and stamp Happy Holidays on here and go ahead and punch that with a one and a half inch circle punch. All right, now through the magic of television, I have this already cut out here. And then I also need some leaves to go with this. And so what I'm gonna do for that is take these two dies, which um, also come in a couple different sizes, but this is the outline of the leaf, excuse my inky fingers, and this is the inside of the leaf where it gives you the veining. And so I popped that through um, my cut emboss machine with um, some shaded spruce ink, or shaded spruce paper to get those. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop these on the back uh, so that I have sort of a, 
a place to stick my flower. So I'm gonna pop this on here. And I really like to use the edges of my Stampin' Dimensionals for things, especially when I just want there to be sort of a consistent, um, a consistent piece here. So I'm gonna pop these on the back and then, let's see, I'll do it this way. So now I have glued basically all three of those pieces together with one Stampin' Dimensional, so it's nice and settled. And then I'm gonna pop a piece on the front here and I'm gonna grab two of my, it doesn't really matter which ones, two of my mini Stampin' Dimensionals so that I can put my um, poinsettia here on the front, okay? And then this flower is cute, but it looks so much better with one of the beaded pearls. Um, go, <laughs> if, you, if you want these for your project, I highly recommend um, getting them sooner rather than later. I, um, I'm nervous that they're gonna disappear, so. All right, so I'm gonna put that on there. Now, um, I just use my, my multi-purpose liquid adhesive, which is a really strong glue, but doesn't have instant grab. So I'm not gonna mess with this for a minute, but I feel like it needs something else. And so to go with our pearl here, I have grabbed my um, silver edge ribbon. And the reason I did that is because the pearl is sort of white and silver. And so I'm gonna kind of bring that silver back. Now, uh, I don't wanna tie this around anything because it's just gonna slide down the sides of the container. They're, they're angled and it would fall off all the time. So I'm gonna show you a trick um, for tying a bow. If you want just the bow, you don't want um, to have to tie it around anything. So what you're gonna do is make two loops, okay, and pinch them together. And if you if this goes by too fast, you'll be able to go back and, and review later. But I'm just gonna take those two, um, two loops and I'm going to tie them around each other as if they were sort of the start of my bow. So, ta-da! And now you have a bow with no, um, not tied to nothing, a bow and nothing, basically. See how that works? Um, I'll do it one more time for you. So make a loop, pinch it, make a loop, pinch it, and then take those two and wrap them around each other back through the hole in the middle so that you have your ends. All right, now I always find that with bows, um, the key to making them look right is getting the loops short. So keep shortening the loops and kind of getting those till they're where you want them. I'm gonna leave the ends of this really long and I'm going to add it here to the top of our uh, top of our little tag with a cute um, mini dimensional there. Okay, so now we have a cute tag. So honestly, this tag could go on a card front, it could go anywhere, but we are going to put it here on our uh, little mini treat cup. And I'm gonna use that Stampin' Dimensional that I already set up there, okay? And so there is our little tree cup and I made another tag ahead of time here and I'll show it to you on the, on the, uh, the non-inked version, so. All right, there we go. So our very cute little tree cups. Um, I hope you are enjoying the projects for Holiday Helper and the projects for the Low and Stamp Studio Tour. Um, I was gonna show you this, um, the projects for the Lou and Sam's tutorials that'll be on my blog later this month. Um, and like I said, they are totally red and green also. Let's get you straightened out there. Totally red and green also. So there is uh, a real fun, they all feature the tree angle stamp set and the stitch triangle dies, which I didn't think I needed, but was completely wrong. So now I have them. Um, but they feature a recessed die tree a series of stacked trees, a shaker card made with the trees, so this will be a video tutorial coming soon, and then um, the uh, triangle treat pouch. So if you've seen this one, we're gonna include this one for this month with a cute little bookmark. So your book goes, um, the tail goes inside your book and then you have your extra little treat. So those tutorials um, are gonna be available on my website. And you can learn more about Love and Stamps card kits to go if you check out my website. These are the ones that I am mailing for today for um, orders in October. So thank you guys so much. 
And a little word about our banner here. Um, the Curvy Christmas is apparently not available to order right now, so that whole bundle is on the not orderable status. Um, it's like a hot stamping up topic. So if uh, keep an eye out, and right now it's available to order, I think November 16th is the projected date. It might change, um, I hope it'll change, and they'll let us order it sooner rather than later, but I'll make sure I post an update on my blog. So if you're, or on my uh, Facebook page. So if you're waiting desperately to order the supplies to make your own photo banner, um, you could substitute and use a different designer series paper and stamp set, like points out of place would be absolutely beautiful. Um, so follow the same directions that I shared yesterday and use a different um, paper. Or uh, you could just hang out and wait till November 16th and have something fun to do at the end of the month. So all right, thank you guys so much for watching. Tomorrow we are going to talk about Christmas cards because they are the number one thing that I find people are excited to make with their Stampin' Up! supplies. And we are going to talk about some tips and tricks for making them easy and duplicatable uh, so that you can make one for everybody who is on your Christmas list. So thanks for watching so much. And uh, remember to like, love, share the video, leave me a comment, tell me what you're working on, what you like, and I will see you tomorrow morning. Happy stamping.